Okay, I've got a little secret. I haven't been using a science curriculum. I've used a few science curriculums in the past, but I mostly found out that my kids were really just reading the books that were suggested by the curriculum or we were watching documentaries or videos on YouTube that were going along with the topics that we were on. I've been also been kind of watching my kids and they do a lot of this on their own. They are naturally curious and asking questions. They're like, hmm, how does this work? Or I wonder what happens if I do this. Right, do your kids do this? That's science. I also didn't want to schedule just one more thing in my week. It just gets full fast. So here is what we've been doing for science. Hey, welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. I am Ashley and I've been homeschooling my kids for the last eight years. If you wanna know, they are 11, nine and six currently. And in my homeschool, like I said, I've used curriculums, but we're just doing it differently this year. There's a few things we've used that I think have been super fun. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are not, but they are all science related and based activities. And my kids have been learning so much through these things. So I wanted to share them with you today. By the way, if you enjoy biblically based curriculum, affordable homeschool resources, or Charlotte Mason inspired homeschool, I would love for you to subscribe and consider sticking around with my crazy joyful noise. Yes. Okay, there's this is a huge list. So I'm gonna try to go down it really quickly. So this is things that they're doing that's not necessarily scheduled into our days. It's during their free time they do this. And it's been so cool to watch. First one is the Tinker Crates. My daughter got a subscription to Tinker Crates for Christmas and that has been the bomb. It's been so awesome. <laughs> the first one on accident, we got two extra crates. Whoops, I don't know how that happened, it was weird. But the boys got to do the first activity with her and that was neat. But um, they have loved these and these are all science-based um, activities um, or art based but they're like art and science together which is really nice for my oldest daughter she loves that that is like her wheelhouse it's been so cool anyway so uh, she's done a little robot they did an art spinning machine uh, they made a shadow puppet visual thing yeah and I know there's more to come so we've really been enjoying that uh, the next one that my son got for Christmas was the circuit snap circuits uh, they're circuit boards and holy cow, he loves this. He'll just sit and play with it. Uh, one of these days, I do wanna pull it out and do a little more direct instruction with all of the kids together with these snap circuits. Um, we have a couple resources we can use for that. But for now, he just follows the instructions that came with it and just plays around with it and is learning about electricity and circuits and, and how they work. It's been really neat. Showing us. Very nice. Uh, the next thing my kids do and enjoy for science is coding apps. Um, and that is because their father, my husband, uh, is a software engineer for his work. So he's always um, wanting to get them involved with it uh, and what he does with work. And he likes making apps and stuff too. So anyway, whenever he sees a coding app and comes across it, he's like, oh, let's get this and let's have the kids try it. I don't know the names of all of these, but I will link them below in the description. Maybe I'll show you a few snaps shots of them doing it. But my kids have really enjoyed uh, this computer science coding apps and learning how to code. Going along with the coding apps is the MBOT. This is something I did buy intentionally for my daughter a couple years ago. Um, she was, so she must have been nine or so at the time. She's 11 now, and unfortunately a piece of it broke off. So she wasn't using it for like a year, um, but we got that fixed and she found the part to fix it. And she's, they've all really been enjoying using the MBOT. Cool. And then this, this thing, when I turn it on, I can move forward, not with this, with this. Mm -hmm. It shakes it. It, it. it was already made, I didn't make it. Okay. You can't use that. Unless if I hold it, it moves around. Right. You find out it made music? Yeah. You just touched the music. To the music. Slow down. Slow down. And the MBOT is kind of a little mixture of robotics and 
coating. Like it's really cool, really neat, re neat toy. Next, the other thing they've been doing for science, I'm gonna include it in this, is Legos. Legos, guys, they are totally, totally engineering based and science based, like 100%. They're, and they're a toy, I guess, you know, but, and during the winter, it's winter right now, we're coming to the end of it, thankfully, but during the winter, we're inside a bit more often and Legos are the thing. <laughs> Not as much in the summer months, but definitely during these colder months, they're like Lego building maniacs. <laughs> so I will link a few of our favorite Lego building books in the description as well from Sarah from Frugal Activities for Boys and Girls. Yes, we've been loving Legos and they've created some really cool things and they wanna go bigger and more. Like I can see um, my daughter is trying to create a puppet uh, with Legos. It was really, really cool. Next is nature study. Yes, we always do nature study. We don't often get outside and do a full on nature walk and stuff during the winter, but they have gotten outside and they're studying nature when we're out there. <laughs> so, oh, and I always make sure I have picture books from the library that are based in nature study as well. You know, birds or animals or um, like the seasons. We'll read a lot of books about winter and animals hibernating, things like that. Again, I don't use a curriculum for this. I just go to the library and get all the books on snow <laughs> or hibernating. So speaking of animals and snow, there's not a lot of animals out here we can actually see or study. Sometimes the birds come back and we watch them on our bird feeder. They haven't been around much lately though, but there's been a lot of snow and icicles and melting snow like to look at and the kids study hands-on. They've been able to test the physics of sledding down a hill and you know skating on a pond, on a frozen pond. So that's been a lot of fun. Lastly, we also like, how do I describe this? We do watch a few animal documentaries or how it's made on Discovery Channel or Disney Channel Plus um, or even YouTube. Cause really lately the kids are asking a lot of questions and they're just like, mommy, how do weathermen know how to predict the weather? I was like, ooh, that's a good question. Let's find a YouTube video on it. And so we watched a YouTube video on that. Um, what are some other questions they had? I can't remember. There were some really good ones where I was like, let's just look it up, you know? And we've watched a lot of really neat videos. I'll share a few of my favorite uh, science channels uh, from YouTube in the description as well. And cooking. Cooking is definitely a part of science. It's definitely related more to chemistry. Uh, and I love cooking myself, so I have my kids join me in the kitchen as often as, as they like to, you know, with baking cookies. And my daughter has made dinner with HelloFresh a few times. Uh, so I definitely believe that cooking is a part of science. And lastly, just getting books, like I said earlier. Sometimes I pick them out, you know, I pick a topic and think, oh, we need to go over this. Um, other times I just let them pick it. They'll go to the sections and find some really neat books at the library that I wouldn't have picked out. It's been really cool. We also do have books from Christian Liberty Nature Reader. My youngest, no, my third grader is reading book one and he reads that a couple times a week, a section from that. And then my fifth grader is reading book five uh, from Christian Liberty Nature Reader. Those are really neat. They have little pieces and snippets of animals and how God has made them and characteristics of animals and things like that. Um, or insects as well. My third grader's book is probably more about insects. Uh, and then my uh, book five is about marine animals. So yeah. All right, that is what we've been doing for science in the last few months. And when my kids get older, I do plan to use a classic, you know, chemistry or biology class um, or curriculum. Uh, but for now, my kids are elementary age and I think this is good. I think this is, is working really well. I'm curious if you have tried doing science without a curriculum. Let us know how you do it, or you can ask me any questions. If you have more questions about how I make this work, uh, let me know in the comments below. Let's chat about that. I do have some videos where there's the curriculum I have used in the past. You can check those out here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you hang out with me whenever I post, post a video. <laughs> it's usually every Wednesday, uh, sometimes on Fridays or Saturdays. So, yep. That's what we got here. You rock at homeschooling. Go find his joy among the noise. See you next time.